Welcome back to our Kim 152 video series. In this video, we'll talk about how to find complex ions, their KD values, their KF values, and how to do reaction tables with them. This question says that EDTA is a compound used to treat mercury poisoning. And treating somebody with mercury poison with EDTA follows this equation that I've given here in the third line. We'll have Hg2 plus plus 2 EDTA yields a complex that has mercury attached to two EDTA molecules. We are also given a Kf value of 6.3 times 10 to the 21st power. We are given an initial molarity for mercury of 0.01 and a molarity for EDTA of 0.025. And the question asks, what will be the new concentration of mercury 2 plus in the bloodstream? We can do this by writing a reaction table. We'll say Hg2 plus plus 2 EDTA yields our complex. Note that our Kf value is extremely high, which means this reaction is extremely favorable. Because this reaction is favorable, we can begin by assuming that this reaction goes to completion. Based on this, we'll write our initial molarities. For Hg2+, it's 0 0.01. For EDTA, it's 0 0.025. We start with no complex, but we can assume that one of these two compounds will run out. We have to ask ourselves which of the two compounds runs out first. To that end, we'll say that our Hg starts at 0 0.01 and we'll divide that by the coefficient in front of Hg2 positive. Since we have no coefficient written, that number is 1, and we'll end up with 0 0.01 equivalents of mercury. For EDTA, we'll do the same thing. We'll say 0 0.025 divide by the coefficient in front of EDTA, which is 2, and we'll get 0 0.0125 equivalents. The lower number of equivalents denotes our limiting reagent, and so we'll have 0 0.01 equivalents as our limiting reagent, that's the mercury. That tells us that all the mercury gets consumed. Therefore, we'll lose 0 0.01 of mercury, and for the EDTA, we'll lose twice as much because of the coefficient of 2, and lose 0 0.02. We will gain an equivalent amount of mercury complex, that's plus 0 0.01, again, because we have a coefficient of 1 in front of it. When we do the math, our equilibrium concentrations are now 0 for mercury, 0 0.005 for EDTA, and 0 0.01 for our complex. However, this is not the final answer. What we must understand is that some of our final complex will react backwards and make the tiniest bit of mercury again. In order to figure out how much mercury is going to get back reacted, we're going to have to set up a reverse reaction table. From our previous step, we have these molarities for each of our reactants and products. We'll carry those forward when we write the reverse reaction. If we reverse this reaction, we'll start with our mercury complex, mercury with EDTA2. This will yield Hg2 plus and two pieces of EDTA. Now, rather than writing Kf for this reverse reaction, we're going to write something called Kd. This is called a dissociation constant. To find the Kd of a complex, this will just be 1 over its own Kf. We'll end up with 1 over 6.3 times 10 to the 21st power. If we do the division, we'll end up with 1.59 times 10 to the negative 22nd. That's going to be the K value for this reaction to the left of it. We'll start by writing the initial molarities from our previous step. Our mercury complex was 0 0.01 molarity. Our EDTA was 0 0.005 molarity. Our mercury will start with zero. 
We don't know what the change is, so we'll write minus x for our complex, plus x for our mercury, then plus 2x for the EDTA. Therefore, at equilibrium, we will have 0 0.01 molarity minus x, x, and 0 0.005 molarity plus 2x. However, our KD is very, very small, so we can use the small x approximation. Therefore, we can strike off any minus x's or plus x's of any kind. This will make our math for the KD a bit simpler. Our KD will equal the Hg2 plus multiplied by the EDTA squared divided by the complex. Therefore, when we write our equation, we will have the KD value, which is 1.59 times 10 to the negative 22nd, is equal to my Hg, which I don't know, it's still x, times the EDTA squared, which will be 0 0.005 squared, divided by my complex, which is 0 0.01. We'll simplify this equation by doing the division on the right side. If we divide those two numbers, 0 0.005 squared divided by 0 0.01, we'll end up with 0 0.0025, with the x still in front of it. We'll have 1.59e negative 20 seconds still on the left. Then we divide both sides by 0 0.0025. When we divide, we'll end up with x equals 6.36 times 10 to the negative 20th molarity. This will be the amount of remaining mercury. So if we keep in mind that we started with 0 0.01 molarity, that means we have used up almost all the mercury. What that means is that the complex we made is so stable that once it encapsulates that mercury, almost all of that mercury is going to leave our body, and that makes it a good way to treat mercury poisoning. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again soon.